Uh, the Conservative Party shared on social media a, a, a selectively edited clip of Sadiq Khan misspeaking during a TV interview. The clip was taken from footage of the mayor speaking with Sky News, in which he said Labour is, quote, proud to be both anti-racist but also anti-Semitic. I'm only going upon what I've read in the media, so I've not seen the transcripts, uh, but as far as I'm concerned, that sort of language isn't acceptable, and it certainly shouldn't be acceptable in a party like mine, uh, that is proud to be both anti-racist but also anti-Semitic before correcting himself to add, beg your pardon, tackling anti-Semitism. And we'll come back to some tackling of those... Anti uh... Beg your pardon, tackling anti-Semitism. But the video that you posted on the Conservative social media account stops his words before he makes the correction. Why are you being dishonest and misleading online? I think it's quite clear that when it comes to the Labour Party at the moment, issues over anti-Semitism are really problematic. Sure, for but them. why are you, why are think, you putting uh, disinformation uh, and, about it out into the public and I domain? Think that's, and, well, just a second. Uh, and I think the, uh, the issues we've seen over the last few days with the Labour leader unwilling for a very long time until he was forced to by MPs to deselect an anti-Semitic racist Labour candidate, I think actually show that, uh, and uh, Times polls have shown this themselves, that uh, people don't believe that the Labour Party has changed when it comes to anti-Semitism. Well, you're not answering the question, and, Mr Holden. Well, I'm actually talking about the real issue here, which I think is anti-Semitism. Well, hang on a second. There's the a Labour second Party. issue. There is a second no, issue. Well, well, I'm, I'm interested issue in talking about the main issue, right, well, which is a main issue well, which is actually affecting people's... No, let's be, let, no, let's be very clear Hang on a second. Here. How can you say that misinformation published by the Conservative Party is not an important issue it's, to address? I, I can tell you now, mis, it's not misinformation to talk about anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. What I we know. Saw, that's not what I've said. I've said that you've published misinformation on Sadiq Khan's comments. Let's be very clear. I am being clear. What's happened over the last few months... Back in October last year, at a, at a meeting of senior Labour people in, uh, in Lancashire, where, where it's clearly attended by uh, prospective parliamentary candidates, the head of the Labour group, uh, Labour Council group leaders, right, it was clear that anti-Semitic tropes were being talked about widely and openly we've, at that meeting. We've covered and this no, in great and nobody, detail on this station. And nobody within Labour, I don't think, it, I think we have, this has been talked about extensively, well, actually, nobody in Labour, for, for, since October last year, nobody in Labour raised that issue. Right, it's now it's almost six months six so, months on sorry, from that. I've asked and you about the, the, the editing of the a video that you've published. It is it it's, is it's, misinformation. I think, uh, I think, it portrays I think, something mm. inaccurate to people online. There isn't. There is. You've not addressed that. What it highlights is there's an issue of anti-Semitism at the heart of the Labour Party, and uh, it's not been edited. It was clipped, uh, and that's exactly uh, the and same thing. And I think thing. that's the. And I think the. No, it's actually quite different. Um, but I think it's. Um, I think. Uh, <laughs> I work in audio production, Mr. Holden. No, well, I think. Well, I think we both know the difference between editing something uh, to misconstrue it or clipping something. And I think the issue we're trying to highlight, and I think which is really important to British people, is that Labour, the Labour Party hasn't changed whether it comes to um, anti-Semitism within it uh, under uh, Keir Starmer as much as you like to say it has okay. it hasn't changed when it comes to the idea that they've got uh, plans for uh, huge increases in public spending but no idea of how to pay for them and I think okay. those are important issues that the British public want to see highlighted and it's important that we highlight them especially when for uh, the best part of six months nobody in the Labour Party was willing to challenge blatant anti-Semitism being talked about openly at Labour okay. Party meetings. It's a double by-election result morning. Professor Sir John Curtis says the big headline is that this this is a terrible result for the Conservatives. The swing to Labour in the Wellingborough by-election is the second largest of all time for the party and the biggest in this parliament. Labour have secured two by-election victories overnight, so taking Wellingborough and... Kingswood from the Tories. In Kingswood, Labour overturned a majority of more than 11,000. So Keir Starmer said the results show people are ready to put their trust in a Labour government. Clearly, however, the by-elections follow a, tri a tricky couple of weeks for both parties. Let's speak to Richard Holden, who is chairman of the Conservative Party. Richard, good morning. Good morning. I've seen a tweet this morning. Are you wearing a black tie? No, I'm wearing a navy tie. Oh, fine. Somebody misinterpreted. I was just checking. How are you feeling this morning? Uh, well, um, uh, you know, I, I, the results uh, could have been better. I think uh, would be an, an understatement. Obviously, I'm disappointed in the uh, results, but you know, two by-elections in a very difficult circumstances. One where uh, a sitting MP uh, had stood down. Uh, one where they'd obviously uh, faced uh, some uh, serious uh, issues uh, and uh, faced a recall petition. Uh, also, uh, with the turnouts that we're seeing in sort of mid 30%, uh, you know, well down on what you'd expect um, 
uh, for, a, for a general election. I think about half, roughly, of what we were getting seeing in uh, general elections. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's disappointing results, but uh, in, dis- in difficult circumstances as mm. well. This is your 10th by-election defeat since 2019. And somebody texts, this is Paul in Bristol, who says, please don't let the Conservatives claim the by-elections are mid-term results. It's less than a year left until the election. It's not mid-term. And these 10 by-election defeats have been somewhat spread out throughout the term. Uh, yep, I mean, I mean, I'd just say uh, again that the circumstances we find ourselves in, in both uh, Wellingborough with a, a recalled MP and then in Kingswood with an MP who'd stood down, uh, you know, obviously months uh, uh, now, uh, uh, you know, we're certainly within a year away from a general election, uh, are uh, you know not 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 great for us. But on the flip side, you could also say that you know, um, you know tur- the turnouts being of this nature. I mean, I remember the. By elections, uh, maybe 2008, I think it was. We had crew just before the 2010 general election, and we weren't seeing falls in turnout like this. It was a real uh, uh, attitude to see a, a, a change, yeah. uh, or in the run up to 1997, and we're not seeing turnouts in in those levels. I think what that means is that, um, you know, from uh, from being on the doors, and I went to both of the by elections uh, four times over the last few weeks. Um, I don't think uh, what we're seeing is that big switch to Labour. Um, I think you can see that from the uh, from the results themselves. Um, but I think you are seeing Conservative uh, voters uh, not at this stage, um, you know, willing to uh, come out uh, at the moment and support the government. OK, on that point, I'm going to use this from uh, Mark McGagan at the University of Glasgow, uh, who says that Labour lost 540 votes in the 1994 Dudley West by-election that ushered in Blair's, Tony Blair's, era of electoral success with a record 29.1 point Conservative to Labour swing. So how much does your turnout argument hold up in the face of that statistic? Uh, well, what I'd say is that you look at the turnout in uh, Kingswood and actually at the last um, general election, Labour got almost 16,500 votes. Uh, they are uh, 11,100 this time. So that's, uh, by my calculations, not 500 down. That's well over 5,000 down. And when you consider the uh, difference, uh, uh, you know, between those, the, the, the uh, also the difference between, say, 2017 uh, numbers, Labour's votes almost halved in places like uh, Kingswood and is, oh, is around 5,000 down in uh, Wellingborough. I don't think there's any clear numbers which are indicating that um, that uh, Labour are, are suddenly getting huge numbers of Conservative uh, switches to them uh, on the doorstep. Well, it's interesting you say that because let's talk about the Reform Party, shall we, who have uh, noted, uh, who, excuse me, who have secured 13% of the vote in Wellingborough and 10% in Kingswood, mm-hmm. broadly replicating the party's performance in national opinion polls. And this from Luke Trill at the More in Common think tank, even at 8%, reform would cost the Tories 30 seats. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that uh, people who are voting for uh, reform uh, rather than voting Conservative would, uh, uh, would you I think you're exactly right, would uh, let Labour in and let Keir Starmer into Downing Street. And if people vote for reform in a general election context, then that's exactly what will happen. Uh, it will uh, help Keir Starmer. Basically, a, a vote for reform is a vote to help uh, Labour win seats. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, the, the difference, I suppose, is that, you know, I remember being on the by-elections for uh, both Rochester and Clacton in the run-up to the 2015 general election, where we actually saw um, reforms predecessor's predecessor, uh, UKIP getting 45 to I think over 50% of the vote in Clacton. And we're not seeing uh, numbers anywhere near uh, those uh, sort of uh, levels um, uh, at all. Uh, so I think, you know, that's, that's uh, I think this, you know, Luke makes a, a sensible point there that a vote for reform is a vote to help Keir Starmer into Downing Street. Which I suppose could be an encouragement for some people, uh, couldn't it? Uh, well, I mean, uh, uh, potentially. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, if they want to see Keir Starmer in, they can vote reform, yeah. Well, there we are. Uh, Professor Sir John Curtis says, uh, or said, at the beginning of the night, we were doubtful of the Conservatives' chances of being able to recover and win the next general election. Those doubts are not in any sense any lighter. If anything, those doubts have grown. Are you doubting your ability to win the general election? Well, as I said at the start, you know, um, the uh, circumstances of each of these by-elections is unique. Uh, an MP stepping down. Sure, sure. Uh, but are you doubting your ability to win the well, general election? Think, John Curtis says yeah. doubts have grown. Well, I, I, I understand that's what uh, John said. Um, what I'd say is that the uh, circumstances of each of these by-elections are very se- separate to a general election. You know, when I was out there, people on the doorstep were, you know, they're not thinking about a general election when they're casting their votes in these by-elections. They know that the government of the country is not 
changed uh, by these results of the by-elections. Um, and that's, I think, one of the reasons you saw, you know, turnouts uh, in the 30 percent. Uh, you know, I think there's, there's, a, there's quite clearly a job to do for uh, us Conservatives to get our um, message across. Um, but I think we're heading in the right direction with things like the inflation uh, coming down. That's been a, a big uh, pressure. We're in uh, we, we went into recession at the end of the year, of course. Reducing on uh, on families. No, and, and uh, you're absolutely right. But I think the the the, the, the preeminent issue that we've been facing over the last few years has been uh, inflation that's been the uh, that's what that's been what we've targeting because that makes everybody poorer what we've started to see over the last i think 7 months now is wages rising faster than um, uh, in uh, than inflation so real terms wage increases i think what we've seen from the bank of england earlier uh, in the last couple of weeks was also those projections for inflation to fall to 2% uh, within the next few months that will allow uh, in time uh, interest rates to uh, come down as well uh, which is particularly helpful for businesses looking Looking to invest for families with mortgages. Uh, I think those things are uh, moving in a good direction. Uh, and, and I think also what we've seen over the last uh, few uh, weeks as well is that, uh, you know, when under pressure, the Labour Party, uh, you know, haven't really got uh, any form of clear plan for Britain. It's clearly back to square one, whether it comes to their own party internals. Uh, you know, we've seen that issue of anti Semitism rise up with two Labour parliamentary candidates uh, being forced to uh, stand uh, aside over the last. Uh, <coughs> a couple of weeks. Yeah, and Councillor also was kicked out of the Conservative Party over alleged anti-Semitic remarks as well. Yeah, in the yeah, last so, yeah, no, so. yeah, you know, well, I mean, that's exactly what we do. You're absolutely right. We kick out people who've, who've got okay. issues. With. It's uh, quite clear that Labour turned them into parliamentary candidates.